Hi guys, Chris here and welcome to my quick comparison between the Cubi 9, which is right here on the left, and the Teclast X3 Pro. Now both of these are the latest uh, Skylake Core M3 6Y30 powered tablets. And they have slightly, slight differences between them when it comes to screen sizes. We can see this has got a larger screen, obviously, different ratios as well. This one here has a 12 inch 1200 piece screen and on the Teclast X3 Pro this is a 16 by 9 1080p screen now this one supports a stylus this one doesn't here and there's also quite a big difference when it comes to RAM because the Teclast has double the RAM of the Cube this one has 8 gigabytes of RAM and we have just the 4 there now are the 4 I find to be okay for my own personal needs but I know there's a lot of people out there who want to do a little bit of video editing 1080p only I hope and they want to run some 3D AutoCAD type programs computer aided drawing there that they, they need that extra RAM uh, so you probably want to think about that one there definitely for a start because there's no way you can upgrade the RAM on the cube in fact you can't really upgrade much on these you can possibly change the wireless card in the slot, there's a spare slot on this model that you could probably put in a 4G card on there. I've covered that in some other videos. If you have a look in the playlist of the internals of this model, you see that. And this model here does have a secondary slot that is already taken up with an Intel wireless AC, which is really good to see. So we have the 5 gigahertz band there with less interference on the tech last here. This one just has Realtek Wireless N. And you can see the design of them is quite different as well. We do have some rather large bezels on the X3 Pro here. If I show you up close, the screen too, there's quite a large, around about a 2mm gap between the glass on the top here, the digitizer glass, and then the IPS panel below. It's a little less obvious on the Cube i9. And this is actually the brightest screen in them. So maximum brightness, we get around 288 uh, lux coming out of this screen. And you get 258 from the cube. But personally, my favorite is the cube screen because I just like the 16 by 10 ratio better. And not only that, I found that the touchscreen performance of the cube seems to be a little faster, a little better and more accurate. If you have a look here, just scrolling sometimes the tech class doesn't seem, you see that right there, not as responsive there, but if I do the same, you see that it's much more fluid. It was a little stutter there where it was just loading in all those comments, but you can see hopefully that the, the QBI 9 screen for me is just way more responsive. I'm not too sure what touchscreen tech it's using, but it's definitely different to that of the, the Goodix that is in the X3 Pro there. And there's another thing too about the Tech Last is you notice that it does have very sharp edges. They've just squared them off. Um, obviously the Tech Last designers there were thinking we had square hands. And these edges just tend to dig into your hands when you're using them. And it is a little bit more uncomfortable to use as a tablet, whereas with our Cubi 9 here, the corners are rounded, it feels a lot nicer to hold and I will go over the uh, the design of both of them too in just a second but I'll just show you the display here um, while it looks dull I have the, the setting set down on there the gap on the screen between the digitizer glass and the IPS panel below is a little less obvious on this one and you see the viewing angles actually on the camera there look quite bad but in person I find that the, the brightness and the colors slightly better again on the cube screen. It's just an overall, I feel, better panel. And just to quickly run down the design of the keyboard. So both of them, are, you can remove the keyboards, obviously, and you have a fixed angle on this one. This is the hard style keyboard that Teclast released for the X2 Pro and the X3 Pro. Smaller size trackpad there. Both of them do support gestures little smaller space to type on typing on this keyboard is pretty good I mean we do have a reasonable amount of travel we've got about almost two millimeters of travel on the keys there 
But overall, I do like the cube one slightly better, and I'll explain to you why. But we do have one extra thing, and that is a USB 2 port here on the side. So you could plug up your mouse on that and use that even more like a sort of hub situation so you can plug it in and have access to that port when not using it. And here we see that the back is metal, just like the cube. Speakers left and right here, rear facing 5 megapixel camera and plastic along here, plastic on the top, that'll be helping with the wireless reception. And on the cube, slightly different design, so ports are all on the side there. Now if you want to see more on the, the actual tablet hardware, the ports and everything like that, check out the review, also look at the unboxing too of that. And metal build, so metal on the back, and a two-stage kickstand right here, so you've got the first and then second kickstand which gives you two viewing angles of the screen something you don't get on the tech last so the build quality and the keyboard I find better on the cube because you do get a slightly wider keyboard spaced out a little more the keys and just I roll better typing experience you could also prop this up you have a look here, it'll go up another angle there, similar to that of the Microsoft Surface Pro 3, which started doing this. So very similar, and of course that does all fold up, and has fabric on the back. Very good build quality, this one. I almost think that this is probably actually even made by the same manufacturer of the, the Surface Pro type covers. I mean, the quality and the materials used seems to be exactly the same there. So when it comes to sound, the Cube has an advantage of having louder speakers. Both of them do have left and right speakers, but they are backfiring, rear firing on the Cube, and they are side firing, sorry, on the Tech Last, and they fire it out of either side here on the Cube. So if I play this now, I'll just give you a quick sample. Right, and now test out the same clip again on the TechLast X3 Pro. And hopefully you could you could pick up on that that the the cube definitely I think has superior sound there. It's just a lot louder and just tends to sound a little better with maybe a little bit more mid-range and a tiniest little hint of bass there. Both of those speakers aren't really that good. Definitely not the best tablet speakers I have heard. And sound quality out of both of the 3.5mm headphone jacks is good. There isn't any static and it's, it's loud enough to drive large headset. Now when it comes to benchmarks, you would obviously think that uh, the X3 Pro is always going to be faster, right? Because it's got double the amount of RAM. Not necessarily. What has happened here that I would say it is slightly faster in a lot of benchmarks. That is true. But only just, only marginally. And here we see the 3D Mark 11 score being slightly higher on the Cube i9 with half the RAM. And just a little bit lower there on the X3 Pro. But I mean, there is nothing really in there. That is only li like literally 93 points there. And the same happens when it comes to uh, Geekbench 3 scores. Slightly high on this one. And to me, benchmarks are not everything. Now, battery life on both of these tablets is what I would consider as poor. It's definitely mediocre because both of them get around four and a half to five hours you could maybe push about five and a half if you really lower that brightness down. They are more powerful chipsets, the Core M's. They definitely consume about double that of what the Atoms do. So it's normal they chew through the battery a lot faster there. But still not a wonderful battery life. So they're very similar when it comes to battery life. And really there's no clear winner. For me maybe the, the Cube has been lasting 20 minutes, maybe 15 minutes longer 
than the Ticklast X3 Pro. And the internal 128GB SSD drives that both of these systems have. Slight difference in speed here, faster reads on the QMI 9 and slightly fast, faster writes there on the Ticklast X3 Pro. And you'll see there's something odd here happening with the speeds there, read speeds there on the Ticklast. I personally prefer the, the speeds that I'm getting out of the, the Q by 9 here. So just to wrap up here, if I was going to pick a winner, and if I was going to keep one of these tablets, which I am actually, um, straight away I would just go for the Q by 9. Um, for the reasons I've covered here, I just think it's a better design. I know this tablet has double the RAM, the stylus support. Me personally, I, I don't need that. But if you're someone that does need the wireless AC, you must have a pressure sensitive stylus and 8 gigabytes of RAM, then obviously clearly this is the one to go for for you personally. But I do like the cubes, smaller bezels, larger screen, 16 by 10 ratio, and the type covers, really nice to type on. Typing experience, I, will, I think it's just a more solid, refined machine. I'm disappointed a little that Teclas decided to go with last year's design on their latest tablet. All they did was just the simplest thing, just update the Core M from the 5Y10 to the 6Y30 and double the RAM and put in the wireless AC. So very simple for them to do that, but they didn't fix things like the sharp corners, the sharp edges that the X2 Pro had because of course they've just decided to use the same design there. So I would seriously look at the QBI 9. Price wise they are almost identical. Some sales that have been around and offers have hinted towards being, well the, the X3 Pro has been cheaper slightly but honestly if you don't need the RAM or the stylus I would definitely go for the i9 here. That's my pick there. Thanks for watching the video. If you want to see more on both of these tablets, have a look in the playlist of the q 9 and then the TechLast X3 Pro. And also check out techtablets.com for the reviews. The q 9 review is up and I am working on the full written review for the X3 Pro here.